Chapter 3 For a moment, Charlie was too shocked to do anything. His face, scarlet a moment ago, was turning a sickly white. Jazz came running up ahead of the other three. What have you done, Charlie? Where's Finn? He, he, he fell into the sea, stammered Charlie, and burst into tears. Kyla gasped in fright. He can't swim, he'll drown. The others arrived. What's happened? asked Amir. Jazz was peering down into the sea from the harbour wall. There were several little boats bobbing about near the steps that led down from the top of the wall to a little wooden platform below. Finn fell in, she said shortly. I can't see him down there. He must be behind one of the boats. Perhaps he's stuck, said Kyla, who was always looking for disasters. Perhaps he's drowned and his lifeless body will float out to sea and... Charlie gave a wail. You shouldn't have chased Finn, Charlie, said Dougie reproachfully. You might have killed him. Charlie wrapped his arms around his head and sank down on the bollard. A clanking noise made Jazz look up. On the far side of the harbour, Charlie's dad was heaving lobster pots around on the deck on the Janine. Jazz cupped her hands round her mouth. Mr Monroe, she shouted. Help, Finn's fallen into the sea, he can't swim. Mr Monroe didn't hear. He went into the wheelhouse of the trawler and started up the engine. Shout louder, Jazz, said Kyla helpfully. Charlie lifted his head. He's deaf, he can't hear you. It's all my fault, I'm a murderer and I'm... What are you taking shoes off for, Amir, said Dougie. Amir had kicked off his shoes, tucked his glasses into one of them and was throwing off his sweater. He didn't answer Dougie. He was already halfway down the steps towards the platform at the bottom. Charlie jumped to his feet and began to wrestle his sweatshirt over his head. Come back, Amir. I told you, it's my fault. I'll go in, he shouted. Jas caught his collar in a strong grip. Let him go, Charlie. He's the best swimmer of all of us. He's done life-saving. You'll only get in his way. Charlie started to fight her off, but Dougie shouted, Look, Amir's jumped in. The four children leaned over the harbour wall again to look down. Amir was standing up to his chest in water between two small motor launches, looking surprised. It's really shallow here, he called up to them. The tide's right out. Can you see Finn? Jazz called back. Amir didn't answer. He was wading round between the small boats, looking carefully behind and under each one. He must be down there somewhere, Kyla shouted down to him. Are you sure he didn't knock himself out? Perhaps he's under the water. Perhaps he's already drowned. Shut up, Kyla, said Jas, seeing the look on Charlie's face. Of course he hasn't drowned. Amir would have seen him. We all would have. Amir appeared, dripping and breathless, at the top of the steps. I looked everywhere, all round for boats. He's not there. But he must be all right. It's so shallow that he wouldn't have needed to swim at all. He must have hidden behind a boat while we were all looking down. I bet he slipped out and went round to the beach while we were all arguing. The children looked at each other anxiously, wondering what to do. They couldn't see round the end of the harbour wall or over the far side of it onto the beach because of, of a rampart built up all along the length of the wall, which was made of rough-hewn stones with gaps in between them. I'll climb up and look, said Amir. Charlie pushed him aside. Without a word he began to climb the rampart, while Amir put his shoes on and tried to wring some of the water out of his clothes. You're not allowed up there. Dougie called up. To Charlie, you'll get into trouble. Charlie was nearly at the top of the wall when a bellow came from Janine. Mr Munro had seen him. Get off that wall, you wee imp, now! At the sound of his father's furious voice, Charlie lost his foothold and fell hard onto the cobbles. Jazz ran across to him, trying to help him struggle to his feet. Are you all right, Charlie? asked Kyla. I should think you've broken your leg. Oh, shut up, Kyla, I'm fine, grunted Charlie. And he began to hobble after Jazz and Dougie, who were already racing back along the cobbles to the tarmac road, with Amir squelching along behind them. A few minutes later, 
the five of them were looking down the beach that ran along the harbour wall, with its fringe of rocks beyond. There's no sign of him, Chaz said. It's like he's disappeared into thin air. He's probably hiding over there in the rocks, said Amir. There's loads of places. Let's go and look, said Jazz. We can't just leave him. He might be hurt or anything. You'd better not come, Charlie, said Dougie. I bet if he sees you, he'll think you want to kill him. Kyla looked expectantly at Charlie, waiting for him to explode. But Charlie only glared at Dougie, then ran off to begin the search. Amir and Jazz were already scrambling over the rocks, calling out, Finn, Finn, are you all right? Come on out, Finn. The tumble of rocks on either side of the beach stuck far out into the water, and they were wet and slippery with the seaweed. There were plenty of places where a boy could hide, and the children worked hard hunting in every crevice, calling out Finn's name, but there was no sign of him. Dougie had to give up first when his mother, on her way home from work at the village shop, caught sight of him scrambling over the rocks. She hurried down to the beach, calling, Dougie, darling, get off those nasty rocks before you'll scratch yourself to bits. Why aren't you at home? She was waiting on the sand as he jumped down from the rocks and took hold of his arm in a tight grip. Dougie tried to wriggle free. Oh, no, you don't, she said firmly. You're coming home with me. Look at your feet, soaking wet. You'll catch your death, Kyla, sweetie. Come on home. Coming, Mum, Kyla called back obediently. In a minute. Then she jumped over the next rock and just carried on hunting for Finn. Mrs Lamb hesitated, then shouted, Well, don't be long, darling. You'll be late for your tea. Kyla ignored her. Amir looked at her with grudging admiration. He wished he could get away with pretending to obey his mum and then going on to just carry on doing whatever he liked. But Mrs Farida was a... Lots tougher than Mrs Lamb. Anyway, it was Dougie that she really kept under her thumb. In a way, Amir felt a bit sorry for Dougie. He'd hate it if his mum treated him like a baby all the time. It was obvious when ten more minutes had passed that Finn was nowhere in or on the rocks. We've hunted everywhere, panted Jazz, jumping down onto the sand. He's just not here. He must have got out of the sea and run up off the beach as fast as a, as a cheetah, said Amir, who likes watching wildlife films. It's weird. I don't know how he could have had the time. Weird? Aye, that's Finn, scoffed Charlie. He's weird, all right. And then, Remembering it had been all his fault anyway, and that he'd made himself a promise not to be nasty to Finn anymore, his face went a dull red colour up to the roots of his spiky fair hair, and he started scuffing up sprays of sand with his toe of his shoe. We might as well give up and go home, I suppose, said Jazz, throwing one last anxious look round the beach. They began to walk silently up towards the narrow road, that separated the shore from the little village above the harbour. When they reached it, Jazz suddenly stopped. We ought to do something about Finn, she said. It's not fair the way we've treated him, keeping him out of Dougie's party and everything. I know, but, began Kyla. I mean, how would you like it, said Jazz. It's not as if, began Amir, but then his voice tailed away. Jazz is right, said Charlie unwillingly. We, I mean, I've got to stop being mean to him. A bellow from the harbour made his head whip round. Mr Munro was standing beside his pile of lobster pots, waving his arms furiously. I've got to go, Charlie said hastily. My dad's going to do his nut. I was meant to be on the pots with him this afternoon. Tomorrow then, said Jazz hastily. We've got the day off anyway. Let's have a meeting at the lighthouse. Ten o'clock? We'll make a plan and decide what to do. Won't you have to ask your dad first? Asked Kyla curiously. Dad'll be working. He won't even notice we're there, said Jazz with a grin.